The scapula or shoulder blade is a flat bone that is triangular in shape. It lies on the posterior lateral surface of the thorax, overlying the second to the seventh ribs. The posterior surface of the scapula is unevenly divided by a projecting ridge of bone, the spine of the scapula, into a small supraspinous fossa and a much larger infraspinous fossa. The costal or anterior surface forms a large subscapular fossa. The three fossae, supraspinous, infraspinous, and subscapular, provide attachment for fleshy muscles. The supraspinatus in the supraspinous fossa, infraspinatus in the infraspinous fossa, and subscapularis in the subscapular fossa. Note that the subscapular fossa is marked by three or four ridges that give attachment to fibrous septa from which the multipinnate fibers of subscapularis muscle arise. Here are the multipinnate fibers of subscapularis muscle. The triangular body of the scapula is thin and translucent, although its borders, especially the lateral one, are somewhat thicker. The spine continues laterally as the flat expanded acromion. Acros means point and omios means scapula as in omohyoid. The acromion forms the subcutaneous point of the shoulder and articulates with the acromial end of the clavicle at the acromioclavicular joint. Here is the smooth facet of articulation on the medial surface of the acromion. Thus, the flattened end of the clavicle does not reach the point of the shoulder. The point of the shoulder is formed by the lateral tip of the acromion of the scapula, not the clavicle. The lateral and posterior borders of the acromion meet to form the acromial angle. The lateral border of the acromion shows vertical ridges for the attachment of the multipinnate central mass of deltoid. Here you can see the multipinnate central mass of deltoid. The deltoid muscle overlying the head of the humerus forms the rounded curve of the shoulder. The acromion can be easily felt and in some people it might be visible, especially when the deltoid contracts against resistance. The deltoid tubercle of the scapular spine is the prominence indicating the medial point of attachment of the deltoid. The deltoid is attached in continuity from the lower border of the spine of the scapula to the lateral border of the acromion and then the attachment is carried to the anterior border of the lateral third of the clavicle. The trapezius attachment has the same extent but on the opposite side extending from the posterior border of the lateral third of the clavicle, medial border of the acromion and the superior border of the spine of the scapula. This is to show you the entire extent of trapezius. One muscle is triangular in shape, the two muscles form a trapezium, and here you can see how the trapezius is attached to the spine of the scapula. Superiorly, the lateral surface of the scapula has a glenoid cavity. Glenoid means socket. This glenoid cavity receives and articulates with the head of the humerus at the glenohumeral or shoulder joint. The glenoid cavity is shallow, concave, and oval. There is a marked disproportion, as you can see, between the large head of the humerus, which forms the ball, and the small shallow glenoid fossa, which forms the socket of the ball and socket joint. The socket only accepts about one-third of the humeral head. The shoulder joint is therefore very mobile, but easily dislocated because of this disproportion. This is a lateral view of the glenoid fossa. It looks shallow and oval. It is deepened slightly by a rim of fibrocartilage, which is called the glenoid labrum. This is where the rim of fibrocartilage is attached. At the upper border of the rim is the supraglenoid tubercle. The supraglenoid tubercle provides attachment for the long head of biceps, and this is located within the capsule of the shoulder joint. The glenoid cavity doesn't face directly lateral, but beeps forward around the convexity of the chest wall. The coracoid process is beak-like. Coracoid means like a crow's beak. The process, the coracoid process, 
is superior to the glenoid cavity and projects anterolaterally. The process also resembles in size and shape the direction of a bent finger pointing to the shoulder. The knuckle of the bent finger provides attachment for coracoclavicular ligament, conoid and trapezoid parts of the coracoclavicular ligament. Apart from the coracoclavicular ligament, the coracoid process provides attachment of two other ligaments, coracoacromial between the coracoid and acromion process and the coracohumeral which fuses with the capsule of the shoulder joint. The coracoid process also provides attachment for three muscles. These are pectoralis minor, which is attached to the medial border of the coracoid process. Then the tip of the coracoid process provides attachment to the short head of biceps and coracobrachialis muscles. Remember that the long head of biceps is attached to the supraglenoid tubercle of the scapula within the capsule of the shoulder joint. The coracoid process can be felt by palpating deeply below the clavicle at the lateral side of the clavipectoral or deltopectoral triangle under cover of the anterior margin of deltoid muscle. The scapula has medial, lateral, and superior borders three borders and it has three angles superior inferior and lateral angles when the scapular body is in the anatomical position as is shown here the thin medial border of the scapula runs parallel and approximately five centimeter lateral to the spinous processes of thoracic vertebrae hence it's often called the vertebral border the medial border of the scapula is also called the vertebral border. The medial border is palpable, inferior to the root of the spine of the scapula. When the arm is abducted and the hand is placed on the back of the head, the scapula is rotated such that the medial border parallels the sixth rib and thus can be used to estimate its position. And deep to the rib, the oblique fissure of the lung is located. In the anatomical position, the superior angle of the scapula lies at the level of T2 vertebra. The medial end of the root of the scapular spine is opposite the spinous process of T3 vertebra. The inferior angle of the scapula lies at the level of T7 vertebra near the inferior border of the 7th rib. Thus, the 7th intercostal space can be palpated just inferior to the inferior angle of the scapula. The medial border of the scapula gives edge-to-edge -edge attachment to levator scapulae, rhomboid minor, and rhomboid major muscles. The three are attached to the posterior surface of the medial border. The anterior border of the medial surface provides attachment for serratus anterior muscle. This muscle passes in front of subscapularis around the thoracic wall to be attached to the ribs. The last four digitations of serratus anterior are attached to a roughened area on the costal surface of the inferior angle. From the inferior angle of the scapula, the thick lateral border runs superolaterally toward the apex of the axilla. Hence, it's called the axillary border. Just below the glenoid cavity is the infraglenoid tubercle. It may be depressed into a fossa, as is shown here. The infraglenoid tubercle gives attachment to the long head of triceps. Remember that the long head of biceps is attached to the supraglenoid tubercle. But the supraglenoid tubercle and the long head of biceps lie within the capsule of the shoulder joint, while the infraglenoid tubercle and the origin of the long head of triceps lie outside the capsule of the shoulder joint. Teres major arises from an oval area at the inferior angle, and teres minor from an elongated, narrower area, dorsal to the lateral border. The origin of teres minor is commonly bisected by a groove made by the circumflex scapular vessels. The lateral border terminates in the truncated lateral angle of the scapula, also referred to as the head of the scapula. The lateral angle is the thickest part and provides the glenoid cavity. The shallow constriction between the head and body defines the neck of the scapula. The superior border of the scapula 
is marked in its lateral part by the suprascapular notch which is located where the superior border joins the coracoid process. The notch is also called the scapular notch and is bridged by the transverse scapular ligament. Suprascapular nerve passes deep to the ligament while suprascapular vessels pass superficial. The inferior belly of omohyoid muscle is attached to the transverse scapular ligament and adjacent superior border. Sometimes the transverse scapular ligament is calcified and the notch is converted into a foramen. In other instances, the notch is very shallow or not present at all. The suprascapular neurovascular bundle supplies the suprascapular fossa, then curves around the lateral side of the scapular spine at the spinoglenoid notch to reach and supply the infraspinous fossa.